Okay, before I give you an example of just actually running a t-test in R, let me show you how to get information off the web. You would just type in t.test, or you could just put t-test R, or you could put R t-test, and just search for that on Google. Uh, here's just some of the first things that come up. Uh, if you see quick R, I'm going to suggest that is probably the best first place to work. It may not have everything, but it's a very well-organized and simple-to-use website. The other one I want to uh, point out to you right here is, uh, if you see anything that has that ETHC thing, that's or, or the manual, that's the actual R manual, and it will give you more of the options in, in that that you have available to you. So we're going to take a quick look at both of those. And of course, you can look around, and there's some other things that you can use as well. That cookbook's not too bad either. Um, Sometimes the R tutorial one will work pretty well. Like I said, my favorite is probably the quick R, so we'll take a look there. And you can see it just goes to the t-tests. I'm going to do this for a one sample t-test. And you just put t.test, open parentheses, y, that's just the name of the variable, and then mu equal 3, where that's what you have in your null hypothesis. And then there's just a comment sign. You can also notice down here that uh, when you do the two-group t-test, this variance equal uh, may come, will come in. But you can also see it has alternative equal less or alternative equal greater. And so uh, you can change this to a one-tailed test. Uh, if you want to specify this as a one-tailed test, you can do that. That's pretty much it for what I want to show you on Quick R. Like I said, it just gives you a really simple uh, example that you can that you can put in. I'm going to go back from this and show you here that this gives you the whole documentation on the t-test and t-top test, open parentheses x, that's the variable again, and then a bunch of other things you can do. But then it gives you an example of uh, alternative equals, and here they're going to do all of them, but you could, you could just put alternative equal two-sided or less than or whatever, less if you wanted to do that. You can see it has a uh, comp level. I think, the, well, the default's 95, but you can change that if you'd like to. And then there's some other things you can do. Those are the most common ones that, uh, that you might use. OK, so now back to R. And I've already read in the data set uh, housing-Windsor. There's another video that shows you how I did that. Uh, if you need to refresh her on that. So, of course, I could just go ahead and compute some means and things like that, which I would normally do. And I'm going to need the names then. And so I'm going to just up here put names and then the name of my uh, data set. And so I want to know if the, well, I'm looking at the price variable. These are just all the variables that are in there. So I could do, first of all, I'm going to attach price, I'm sorry, attach the name of the, attach my data. If you don't do that, then at least for some things, you'll have to, when you refer to a variable, instead of saying price, you would have to do type my data dollar sign price, which would mean look in the my data set to find the variable price. But uh, this will put it in there so you don't have to uh, do that. It's in the working uh, memory. So now I can just do mean price, for example. And of course, I can do, you know, box plot or whatever else I want to do there. And then and you should do those things as well. Now, what I want to know is, is the average house of a price, price of a house less than $70,000, let's say. So I'm going to do t dot test, then I have to give it the name of the variable, and then mu equals 70,000, and then I'm going to put alternative equal less, and there we go. I'll have to bring this down a little bit so you can see it. 
there's the T value, the degrees of freedom, the P value, uh, and then here is a 95% confidence interval. Now the way um, R operates does its confidence interval a little bit confidence intervals a little bit differently in that if you do a one-tailed test, it assumes that you don't need anything on uh, the, in this case, the lower side. So it just starts at lower lower infinity and goes up here. That's really not the way you want to um, report a confidence interval though. So when you're doing a one-tailed test, at least in the way confidence intervals are conventionally uh, reported, you shouldn't use that uh, confidence interval. And I'll get to that in just a second and what to do. But I just want to re get you back here. There's your T value, your degrees of freedom, your, and your P value. You can see that it's slightly above 05, really close. If you stick to the, I guess, stick blindly to the cutoff in this case, you would fail to reject HO, but you should recognize that it's really close to 0.05 if that's what you're using for, uh, for your cutoff. Well, let me go to that. Uh, confidence interval then if you want to get just a regular confidence interval reported. Uh, what you, I'm going to copy this there so I can leave, keep my stuff, but just don't include the alternative. And now when I run it, I'll get a regular confidence interval. And the other thing I can do is I can change the confidence level level. And that is comma conf dot level. And then just equal, I'll put 0.9 to change it to 90%. And you'll see that we have now a 90% confidence interval, which isn't quite as wide as the 95% interval. You're multiplying by 1.645 here and 1.96 up here, so which brings me to sort of a multiple choice question you might say on a test, that what happens uh, when you change the confidence to the width of the interval when you increase your confidence? Well, if you increase your confidence, the width of the interval gets larger. When you go from 90 to 95, you go from, if we're doing a Z value or an approximate T value at a very large sample size like this, you're going to get virtually the same number. Um, but you're going to move from 1.645 to about 1.96, approximately. Okay, that's it for this one.